Hi everyone and welcome to this week's STS check-in. We just finished our first mesocycle muscle endurance and we're about to move on to hypertrophy. But before we get ahead of ourselves, let's review what we just completed. Congratulations, that was four weeks straight. Got all that endurance underway and what's really nice about that is it laid the foundation for the next level of the mesocycle we're going into. Um, in these last four weeks of the muscle endurance phase, we hit a couple of extra exercises mixed with the others. We increased our weights to 70%. All those differences helped to graduate us up to the next platform, which will be the muscle building phase. Some things that stood out in the chest, shoulders, and bicep routine, we had the barbell curls with the band. Adding that band brought such intensity to the movement. Oh my goodness, I thought I was going to scream at the end, but I made it through. How did you do on that? We also had a drop set overhead press, and we did three sets of that. The last 10 of those burned so badly, but that's just what we want, so we're accomplishing our goals. I mean, disc 11, we had back and triceps. Not a lot of new exercises there, but the seesaw push-ups once again got in there really good with those partials, as well as the one-arm kickbacks with the band, both great burners. And disc 12, we had legs, we had fire walkers, always good to give us a great burn. And we even had in the bonus leg work some great burners there. The outer thigh lifts with the added challenge of lifting the arm and stuff, all great stuff. I hope you enjoyed those challenges. Well, that completes the muscle endurance phase. Now this week you should be resting, doing all the cardio activities you want, stretching, hiking, taking walks, anything but lifting heavy weights because we want our muscles to recover. We've just set the stage doing the muscle endurance, ending our last week with 70% at our one rep max. Now it's time to let the muscles recover and rejuvenate without weight training. And then when we come back, we're gonna start at 70% of our one rep max and enter the hypertrophy stage, which is muscle building. And in our muscle building phase, we're gonna be increasing our weight from 70 to 80% of our one rep max. We're also gonna be increasing our rest periods now to a full minute. Occasionally, we'll be going over that a little bit. And we're gonna be decreasing our reps as well. Other changes you're gonna notice, we're gonna change the muscle groupings. This time we're gonna be doing the first disc 13 is gonna be chest, shoulders, and triceps. Then next, instead of going to the next upper body, your next workout will be a leg workout where we're gonna focus on triceps. And what we're doing to maximize muscle recruitment and intensity for the leg workouts is we're taking three exercises and doing them back to back. I think you have maybe 10 seconds just to get the equipment to do the next exercise. So you're gonna have one exercise, another, and another with a 10 second rest in between. And you're gonna do them all for 10 reps each. So it totals about 30, it totals a 30 reps, and then what you're gonna do is rest one minute, repeat those three again, rest one minute, repeat them again, rest one minute, and then we start all over with three entirely new exercises, and we'll do that again at the end. So you'll see the triceps, it's gonna get you winded, it's gonna make you get so much blood flow into your muscles, it's a great tool to really enhance muscle recruitment in the legs. Um, and then our final muscle grouping will be back and biceps. And the other change you're gonna notice with these things is in the muscle endurance phase, we had one set of this, one set of that. We didn't stay with one muscle group the whole time. This time we're gonna completely exhaust the muscles. So looking at back and biceps, you're gonna do all of your back and then all of your biceps, completely exhausting the back before you go to biceps. The same goes with the chest, shoulders, and triceps. You'll do the same. And legs, we're gonna you know, exhaust them and then do the groupings the way I just discussed earlier. So these are wonderful things. Be prepared for that as you move into your hypertrophy phase. Right now I'd like to do something a little bit different. I'm gonna be taking one exercise and focusing on the form and the movement foundation just to help you along with any time we get into the program on certain exercises, you'll have these tidbits to refer back to. So what I'm gonna do is take a barbell here and what you'll do for the barbell row it's very important even going to get it. We're gonna use an underhand grip and as you go down to get it, you're gonna to squat to pick it up and right in this position, you wanna sit back into your hips as opposed to tipping your upper body over to get the bar. So I'm gonna give you a front view of it and I'm also gonna give you a side view of it. So here would be the side view of what you shouldn't do. A lot of people keep their legs straight tip over the bar and try to pull it right up to the thighs. And that's a lot of stress on the lower back. So you wanna immediately 
go down for the barbell, and I'm going to be using underhand grip now. So you're going to sit back into your hips, just as you'd be going down for a squat. Take the barbell naturally so that it comes just outside the thighs a little bit. Now, if it's not there when you go to grab it, just make that adjustment as you get there. Now, to do the row correctly, you want to have your legs about hip width apart, hip to shoulder, and you want to look forward and think of going into a squat. So you're going to hit, hinge back from your hips, and then you're in the ready position with your head neutrally aligned, and you're going to draw the bar back right into the navel, down, and stand up again. So you'll sit back into the hips, Draw the bar into the navel, anywhere between the navel and rib cage. Extend it and stand straight back up. Notice that my elbows are coming just a little bit higher than the rib cage, extending beyond my back there, and then down and up. Okay. Another thing you want to keep in mind, and this is if you're still feeling low back stress after already making sure that you've shifted your weight into your glutes, and that would be if you're finding that you're still stressed in the back to widen your base of support. So just widen your legs a little bit and that will help take stress off the back. We also have other hand options we can use with a barbell row. You can stand and take an underhand grip, which is the one I just showed you. You can also flip your hands into an overhand grip position, and you can also keep them overhand and take them a little bit wider. Now, these different grips will shift the emphasis differently. The underhand grip will shift a little more focus into the central back and biceps. The overhand grip will be a little more shoulders and kick out into the lat and upper back area, and of course, the wider range will really get the lats. The rhomboids trapezius area um, will get in there a little bit too. My favorite grip of all is the underhand with our hand supinated underhand grip barbell row. And the reason being is most times in life when we're relaxed, we're sitting down, whether it be at a computer or just to watch television, we're relaxed, hands are usually in our lap, our shoulders are a little bit rounded, and our shoulders are also internally rotated as a result. So when you turn your hands this way, it externally rotates the shoulders and shifts the focus immediately into better posture and takes stress off the rotator cuff. So when you're in this position now, not only is it taking stress off the rotator cuff, but it's promoting better posture. We have time for one question today, and it's from Leanne. Hi, Kathy. I've got two sets of questions I was hoping you could help with. First, I've noticed the Mezzo One back workouts that you have. We do two sets of chin-ups and one set of pull-ups. Since the chin-ups incorporate more biceps, I was wondering if they work different parts of the back than pull-ups. And the second question is, also, it seems that I'm feeling some of the push-ups, like the Elmo's and straddled ones, in my triceps more than my chest. Are some of the push-up sets designed to incorporate more triceps than chest work? Thanks so much. I'm just loving STS. I'm glad you are. Um, let me address your tricep question first, since that's the easier of the answers. Um, yes, the triceps are activated more in certain straddled push-ups, as you've noticed. But you need to also realize that when the hands are drawn in closer to the body, you're also firing up your inner chest. And being that that's the case, we want to recruit a little different areas of the chest in the workout. We are going to bring our hands closer at times. And yes, sometimes we're going to incorporate other muscles as well, but that's just the way it goes. Um, the important thing to keep in mind there and what you should be doing as you're doing those closer grip exercises is to think of your inner chest muscles so that you can fire them more effectively. As far as the chin-ups and the push-ups and or the pull-ups go, uh, you are correct that the chin-ups do involve more bicep work. When you do the overhand grip, you your pull-up version, you're getting more lat muscle in there. Chin-up version, you're also getting lat muscle, but you're getting the assistance from the biceps, so that's gonna make the exercise easier. Most women, or most people in general, gravitate more towards chin-ups for that very reason, because you just feel more powerful in the movement because you're able to do it easier. So we like to alternate. If you can only do chin-ups, that's effective as well. But if you can try to do a few pull-ups in there, do them as well to fire up the lats a little more effectively. Um, and if you want to go wider grip and get a more V-taper shape in your back, you can try to take the hands out even wider and pull up to the top. So to answer your question again, yes, you are going to use more biceps, but you are still not ignoring the back. Just keep the variation in the movements and you'll get the best of all worlds. Thanks for watching this week's show. Enjoy your active recovery week and get ready to pump it up when we get back. We'll see you next time.